poems, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and don't come in your sweats. <laughs> right. Don't come in your sweats. All right. We are ready. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to the Avanti Entrepreneur Podcast. I am Dave Mamano, your host, and we are here to help entrepreneurial achievers and business owners and leaders move forward so that they can reach their potential. I do this by interviewing the nation's best business movers and shakers. Today, I have on the show a great, awesome, energetic guest, Dana Adams. Dana, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm, so, I'm really excited to be here with you. I'm so excited. We've been talking about doing this for a while. Um, we're going to get into it, but over the summer, uh, you sent me your your book, mm -hmm. uh, which is I, I I started reading it. As you can tell, I have I have a little bit more to go. Uh, your beautiful personal note is my bookmark. So thank you for that. You're uh, it's called Live Your Gift, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about that as well. Mm -hmm. And it even comes with a companion guide, right? So we're going to mm -hmm. talk about what that means. But first, Dana, I'm going to tell everybody a little bit more about you by reading your bio. So Dana Adams is a founder of the Life Mapping Institute and considered one of the country's top thought leaders on the life mapping process. For decades, first as a student and now as a teacher, Dana facilitates the highly acclaimed life mapping workshops, which are based on her two books, Live Your Gift and Live Your Gift Companion Guide. Dana has inspired, empowered, and led thousands to embrace their life's gifts to live happy, abundant, and authentic lives. A licensed real estate agent since in Washington since 1993, Dana has enjoyed a highly successful career helping buyers and sellers of luxury homes in Kirkland, Bellevue, and surrounding Eastside communities. She has also excelled in her specialty niche, Land to Luxury, selling to fill land and development property and marketing the new homes once built. Dana is involved in every step of the building process from land acquisition, meeting with engineers, city planners, architects, interior designers, to the sale of the completed new construction. Dana is a seven-time five-star award-winning agent for her outstanding sales and service performance. Dana further distinguishes herself in her field as a managing broker, master certified new construction specialist, certified luxury home specialist, Master Certified Negotiation Expert and member of the National Association of Realtors. Wow, I got to stop and say, wow. Uh, it's like, we're not worthy. This is, this is uh, incredible, but there's more. A native of Southern California, Dana grew up around commercial fishing. She moved to Kirkland, Washington with her family in 1979. And after high school, worked in the Alaskan fishing industry. She is a graduate of the University of Washington with a degree in business management and marketing. Still living in her hometown of Kirkland, Dana now raises four boys there. In addition to her sons, Dana's passions are lifelong pursuit of personal development and community service. She has organized community-wide events on opiate awareness and served on the city of Kirkland task force boards for sidewalks and affordable housing. She currently sits on the Evergreen Health Youth Mental Health Task Force. Dana Adams, I, I feel like you are one of, one of tri are you triplet? Are there three of you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sometimes I wish there were. <laughs> wow. I mean, you know, if you just told me that you were the real estate agent that you are and raising four sons, I would right there and then, right? Like I'm not worthy, right? And, uh, but this list goes on and on. So you are a determined uh, young lady just making things happen and uh, very, very impressive. And you, uh, you must not only be uh, an incredible um, with mapping your life, but mapping your time, which is probably a big building block of mapping your life, right? So, yes, uh, it is actually. Yeah, congratulations. So, Thank tell you. us about the journey. So, you know, in the early 90s, you got into real estate, obviously, mm -hmm. did very well. And, uh, and what made you, you know, get into bringing it to the next level? with the, uh, the Life Mapping Institute. Well, how, how, how did that hit you? Yeah, so it hit me actually, I was, I was 25 and I was at a leadership retreat and I, I was involved in a meditation that we were all being taken through. And I literally had this vision of speaking in front of a really, really large audience, as well as this sort of intuition about writing. And it was exciting. I, I really believed that there was something I needed to pay attention to in that. And yet I stayed stuck for a very, very long time until I decided a couple of years ago that I was finally ready, you know, to say yes to what I thought my project was and really to myself. Um, real estate has been a phenomenal career, but I lived for a long time with this knowing that I really thought that there was more 
meant for my life than selling, you know, wonderful houses in the area here. So, I mean, so most people would say, okay, let me, let me go to a course, pick up a book and, uh, and, and just kind of do it for myself. Um, but you took it a whole next step further and, and, and decide, well, I'm not only going to do it for myself. I'm going to, I'm going to create a business out of it and help others. And, and this is just not, this is not like a little, like cute little side project. I mean, for those of you watching this, I'm holding up her companion guide. And this thing is, I don't know if you have page numbers on here. Yeah, you do. It's, I mean, it's 150 pages, right? Mm -hmm. And this goes along with the book to, to kind of customize your plan, your life, right? Yes. Uh, yes. So, I mean, this is like, this is kind of like your master's level in, in life planning, life mapping, right? <laughs> so, um, so tell me about this. Or I mean, are you kind of an all or nothing person? Like you're going you're gonna to do nothing or you're going to like, you know, bring it to like this massive, incredible on steroids type of level? <laughs> Generally, yes, that is true. Mm -hmm. uh, I think with my background in selling high-end real estate, that's been very helpful. Um, there's just something about being able to surround myself with things that I enjoy and also wanting to put out something into the world that is a really nice product. So that was important to me. What, how I consider the both of them is that the, the book is more of an overall story and it incorporates other people's stories of overcoming challenges. And it talks about the life mapping process. And then the companion guide itself really takes someone through the entire process of, com of completing the life map. So even if you didn't have the book handy, everything you need is right there in the companion guide. And it is, it's a, a document that you can always refer back to. And then the way that the system is set up, really every quarter, it's something that can be updated specifically for whatever the priority goals are that you may be working on. Mm -hmm. So now, when, so when you buy the book, you, you could get the companion guide as well. You can. Um, so now have you found, I'm just speaking, you know, the, there's a saying ready, willing, and able. A lot of people are ready, a lot of people are able, but as far as the fortitude of being willing at a consistent level, having right. endurance, right, to be willing mm -hmm. uh, on a continual basis, most people don't have that, right? That's mm -hmm. why most people aren't playing at the level that you are. Um, what is your experience with people uh, on their own being able to do this program? So one of the things that I really appreciated about it, and I the, the life mapping process was originally created about 20 years ago by a man named Bill Cohen. And Bill was wonderful enough when I approached him a couple of years ago about my idea, which was to take the original foundation that he had created for life mapping, but then I wanted to add to it and sort of beef it up a bit in the areas that I didn't feel like it was addressing someone like me. And it's in some of those areas that you're talking about where we can have the best of intentions for what we want to do or, or the goals we want to hit, but we might find that we are sabotaging ourselves or never quite getting there. And Bill welcomed the idea. And so I have sort of remastered the life mapping process. And uh, because it is something that's simple enough to take and create on your own, that was really the purpose of creating the the companion guide. So if someone wasn't able to attend a workshop that they could do this on their own. And what I have found with the many, many people that have been trained is that those people that are willing to take the time to kind of break away from life for a couple of days and go through the process while, while I can guide them, they are much more apt to not only complete the process, but then continue with the process down the road. It, it is not meant to be one of those things that you just look at once a month or once every couple of months. It is designed to incorporate into your daily life so that you can stay on top of the things that you say, you know, that you want to achieve. Helps make it all easier. Well, so, you know, I went to your website and, and so it seems like one of the deliverables is you, you end up creating a life map, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and, and you were bold enough to put your life map on your website. Mm -hmm. And I went ahead and printed it out, right? Yeah. So, um, wow, wow, Thank wow. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, you know, so it's a two-page, two, it's a two -page, like, uh, 
front and uh, front and back document, mm -hmm. very well organized beliefs, principles, pure joy, right? Um, and then, you know, your core values, right? And then uh, on the back, your goals, family, career, spiritual, security, financial, material wants, right? I like mm -hmm. that. Um, and uh, um, rocking chair. I don't know. You might be too active for a rocking chair. I see that. <laughs> Maybe when you're 90, right? So that's no actually that's that's so i can allow myself to just kind of slow down and take a breath <laughs> right right i'm sure you think about that sometimes right so so if the so if someone goes through the program and goes to the companion mm -hmm. guide this is one of the things that they'll have is this deliverable this this, uh, this life map now you know i've had some other people um you know on the um show here i've had hal elrod i've had uh john mitchell and, uh, and, uh, and Kelly Hatfield, all who have, uh, you know, similar philosophies as you and, and uh, I, I want to say, you know, programs that are very different than yours, but with the same goal as far as retraining your brain uh, to bring you where you want to be. And it all comes down to repetition, right? Like yes. creating the vision um, and then, you know, and then also, you know, uh, creating the, uh, the actions that you have to be taking every day to make those visions come true, right? Yes. You know, some people are into, they think they can manifest something just by thinking about it. And, and, and some people are dead set that say that works. And, you know, mm -hmm. hey, listen, if it does for them, fantastic. For me, it never has, right? I can manifest a million bucks all day long. I can think about it, but, you know, I need to create some habits and actions every day to be able to get there, right? So right. the one-two punch. Um, so is this something your life map, um, is this something that you review on a regular basis? It is. So what we have set up after someone creates their life map is that on a larger scale, uh, about two thirds of the way through the process is where you go from really big picture, lots and lots of goals to what's really going to be your focus for the next 90 days. Mm -hmm. And so that's narrowing down to three priority goals. And then how do you start breaking those down so that you can create action to move forward towards <laughs> And so, my colleagues are two bits of the worksheets that are in the guide. Those are the worksheets that are in, uh, I keep a binder that's sort of separated by tabs. That's how I stay organized. And every day, I've taken sort of the bigger goal and broken it down into then what's actionable for the week, what's actionable for today, and what are the priorities. And so by having, there's a, like a one page summary sheet and I call it the today worksheet where it has some gratitudes on there. You know, did you exercise? Where are your priorities for the day? But that allows everything that's top of mind to be right in front of me. So I am referencing that every single day and then probably a little bit more comprehensive review once a week so that I can look at that original list of the priority goal and what the actions are. And then I know where I'm at and what I can pull forward. That's great. So do you do a lot of this in the morning before the mm -hmm. tsunami of the day starts? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes. And you know, it's sort of like with uh, Hal Elrod's habit of, you know, getting up and, and preparing for your day and really setting an intention and getting in that place. I work really hard to try and do the same thing where I'm not answering my cell phone. I'm not even actually trying to look at my cell phone anymore until I'm, I've done those things. Yeah. And, and then I feel like I really start my day. Yeah. Right. So you do the, the hell Elrod is uh, the, the miracle morning. He was on my podcast uh, not too long ago. And uh, I read his book with Cameron Harold. So miracle yeah. morning for entrepreneurs. And uh, he talks about the savers, right? The savers. Yeah. And uh, which is if I, it is, so uh, silence, right? And then uh, uh, the A is for, um, uh, is it actualizing, right? Actualizing what you want. Yep, and then uh, and then V is for uh, the visualization. Mm -hmm. E is for exercise. R is for reading, and the uh, final S is for scribing, which he says is a fancy word for writing, but it didn't go well. The W at the end didn't go well with saber. So, <laughs> so it sounds like you have a similar similar routine. Maybe you've adopted mm -hmm. your own that that covers a lot of those things too. Right, right. And mine generally includes that, you know, the writing that you talk about. I, I usually try to do like five to 10 minutes each day. And it's, I really appreciate the time um, when I'm, when I'm not typing on a computer, and I'm just allowing myself to write what, whatever my thoughts are. 
it's actually turns out to be a really good um, idea format for, you know, things that just kind of bubble to the surface and then I can make a note of them and, and then refer back to it if I want to. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're journaling just kind of whatever hits mm -hmm. you. Whatever hits me, what I might have, if there was something that I dreamed, was dreaming about the night before or any ahas that I suddenly had about things I was thinking about. Um, sometimes there'll be an idea that will come for like a blog post, sort of like, you know, what's up, what's up in my life today and what's going on this week. So it ends up being a good place to generate some of those ideas. Great. What time do you get up? Usually around six o'clock in the morning. Okay. It's not too bad. Mm -hmm. I hear, I mean, hell gets up at three 30. I'm like, all right, that's not happening. You know, so <laughs> crazy. No, no, I would not be at my best at that time of day, but yeah, I, yeah. you know, getting up and, and the first part of my day is generally helping to get my kids sure. out the door and, and making sure that they're set and then yeah. really kind of going into my space. Well, he goes to bed at 8.30 and I'm sure with four boys, uh, that's not happening for you, right? <laughs> it's, it's, no, it's so funny. It's almost the opposite. Like um, a lot of people are just wiped out at the end of the day, but I think I found, you know, when I had four, when they were younger and it was just so busy during the day that it seemed like my break really came once they were all down for bed. So yeah. from like eight to 11, that was actually a time I could get a lot of stuff knocked out. Right. Yeah. yeah. What is your, what is your non-negotiable? If you just have a crazy day, um, but there's one thing that you will always do come hell or high water. What is that thing? Generally try and have that be some kind of exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, really to clear my mind, even if it's not for as long as I would want it to be. Um, sometimes if I can even just take a lap around the block from my house, Mm -hmm. um, just trying to mentally get a break yeah. and, you know, I have to, I have to be really conscientious about that because, you know, I, I do love what I'm working on right now and it does take a lot of time. So, you know, I will have a tendency to, you know, want to dismiss the importance of it, but it's really important to me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm the same way for me. It's a, if all those other things go to hell, I'll find a way to at least get some blood pumping to the brain somehow, mm -hmm. some way, right? Yeah. Yeah. I downloaded this app called seven minutes and you know, mm. uh, it gives you a workout every day uh, that you can do in seven minutes. Right. And uh, I'm like, if push come to shove, I can always find seven minutes. Right. And it, yeah. it does make you sweat. It's a good seven minute workout. So. Wow. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Um, well, so I want to talk about you a little bit because I think people can take the shortcut that at this point in your life, you're extremely successful. Right. Um, you know, uh, you are an attractive person. You look like you got it going on 24 seven, but you know, I'm, I'm reading what you call some of your highlights in, in the, uh, what you sent me here. And, you know, people would make a mistake if they assume that, you know, you were, you were you know, handed this, uh, charmed life card. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, you, you grew up, it says in a very chaotic home and you experienced mm -hmm. a lot of trauma. Um, you say that your mom died by suicide uh, three days before you graduated high school. You are a single mom of four incredible uh, young men. Um, so, you know, those things right there um, don't always correlate to the success that you are right now, um, mm -hmm. that you have right now. Um, you know, I'm going to say, quote unquote, secret, but, you know, how, how did you take, you know, a lot of that trauma that you know, people would understand um, after reading this, if you were, if you held out the victim card a little bit, right? Because I mean, that's, those are some tough things to grow up with. Yeah. Um, uh, but what, what do you, what do you really attribute you, um, you know, even though you went through those experiences, getting to where you are today, all these years mm -hmm. later? So I would have to say that the, probably the biggest thing that continually gave me direction in my life was the idea of setting goals and having a vision of where I wanted to go. And ironically, those were things that my mom started to teach me when I was only about 10 years old. You know, she was, she was ahead of her time at that time. Um, you know, that would have been in 1980. And, I, you know, I'm 49 now, but she really was a believer that we can create a life that we imagine. And so she started to introduce that to me in the format of affirmations, visualization, uh, you know, writing down our goals and really going after the things that we want. And, 
you know, you wouldn't necessarily think that someone who ends up taking their life, that, that that's something that they really would think about. Um, but she did. And, and the sad thing was that she really wasn't able to put it in practice enough in her own life that it made the difference. But for me, it did. And, you know, those years between the time I was, uh, you know, bet really between 12 and not about 19, really some brutal years. And, you know, and then in thinking back, you know, some of that started when I was really young. I mean, the first time that I can even recall an incident where my mom tried to take her life, I was six years old. Mm. And so, you know, just recalling the scene that, that played out in our house that night, um, you know, it, what it did was even in a very subconscious way, it gave me this sort of a uh, twisted understanding that if life gets really hard, you can just check out. And, you know, that, um, you know, even though what you see, I, I know what you're saying about what you see on the outside, it is not always an accurate reflection of what's going on inside or what the history has been. Um, you know, I feel very lucky because I didn't turn to addictive substances per se, but as far as food goes, that was a total crutch for me. Um, it was one of sort of the bonding times with my mom when I was younger. And I, and I was very heavy as a teenager, all the mm. way up to the point I was uh, 19, right before I went to Alaska. I weighed in for my physical, I was 205 pounds. Wow. And you know, I'm not that tall, so that was a lot of weight yeah. for me. And I felt miserable. I mean, I, yeah. I hated what I saw when I looked in the mirror. Yeah. And so, you know, living, living in that situation and having sort of that experience, you know, it still continually challenges me as an adult. That's part of why the exercise is so important yeah. um, because you know, I, I do like a good cheeseburger on the weekend and I like ice cream at night. And so that balance of where, to, where I find that is in the ability to work out yeah. and sort, sort of feels like it gives me more permission to do it. But, you know, when you experience those things, it's not like they just go away because, you know, the years pass or time passes. So I have seen how those things have continued to impact me. And, you know, one of the greatest impacts was not being willing to step into this work until I was actually getting close to the age that my mom was when she took her life. Mm -hmm. I was, um, I was approaching 49 and I, you know, I just really thought like, um, my boys, if, if something happened to me, my boys would have seen me have a generally successful life. Although the real estate crash was brutal for anyone in, in my industry, um, but they wouldn't have seen me really step into something where I, I wasn't guaranteed what the outcome was going to be, mm. that, that was really meaningful to me and meaningful work. And I wanted them to be able to see that because I would want them to do that. Yeah. And so part of life mapping and the recreation of the process, uh, one of the best tools I think is this, it's a worksheet that's called the goal inquiry worksheet. And what it does is it, it almost sort of calls all the skeletons out of the closet of, you know, here's a really big goal. And so for me at the time, it was writing the book and asking myself, what are the things that are going to potentially trip me up and where does it come from? Like, what's the old story? And for me, it was really, there was a lot of programming, especially on the part of my mom, that if it wasn't going to come out perfect, top notch, you know, Olympic gold, it wasn't worth doing. And so I would put a lot of pressure on myself. And if I didn't think I could pull it off, I just wouldn't even try, mm -hmm. which was sad because I delayed a lot of things and I didn't try a lot of things that I might've been willing to otherwise. But so by, by going through the process, especially when it comes to a big goal, and if it's something you haven't been able to attain before to think about, you know, what are, what's, what's the old voice, you know, the, the inner critic, or, you know, I kind of refer to mine as Bubba, that nasty voice that immediately wants to shoot down the idea that might be harder than, you know, what might come naturally or easy, but the meaningful part of it, it just allows, it, it gives an opportunity to reframe that. And in thinking and putting myself in the position of, 
an older version of myself? And if I did accomplish the goal, you know, what would that person be saying to me now? And so being able to do that before you start working toward a really big goal, I think it, it stacks your deck so that when things get hard or they're challenging or you feel like you kind of got knocked off your program for a couple of weeks, you have something to come back to sort of center. And so all of the steps up to that point, you know, in the life mapping process, they are great for grounding sort of this foundational knowledge of who you are and how you, how you want to show up in the world. And then, you know, making sure that we're going after those things that are in alignment. Yeah. Well, I'd say, I would say maybe, maybe, I don't know if you would agree with me. I would say the majority of people are winging it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you ask them their core values or ask them where they want to be in five years, yeah. they don't know. I mean, they're getting up and they're, they're, they hop on the treadmill of life, right? Kids, yeah. mortgage, work, da, da, da. And, uh, and just to take that deep breath and go through a program like yours to really mm -hmm. think through, you know, who am I? You yeah. know, what are my core values? What's my tagline, right? And, uh, yeah. and what, you know, what do I want out of my spirituality? What do I want out of my, you know, career, uh, my physical health, my mental health, mm -hmm. my relationships, right? And, uh, and really kind of like vision where you want to be with those and then, you know, creating the plan to get there, right? Yeah. I had a guy in my show, you may know him, Ed Milet, and he said something that blew me away that he thinks about all the time that when he dies, God is going to introduce him to the person that, uh, that he was um, like, if he maxed out every part of his life, Mm -hmm. uh, he, that, that person that, that he met in heaven would be that person, right? So he would meet the maxed out version of himself. Mm -hmm. And his, his dream is like, it's the same person that he is, right? That's awesome. Because imagine if you're like, you know, you're only half that person and you think to yourself, I could have been that if I, yeah. you know, with that much more discipline and focus and belief in myself, right? Mm -hmm. That would, that would, that would be devastating, right? How, how, yeah. how sad would that be? Like, oh my, I didn't max that out, you know? Um, and he's got me thinking that now too. So it sounds like I'm holding this up again, your life map. Um, that this is, this is uh, Dana uh, maxed out, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure it's a living document, right? You're updating mm -hmm. it, changing it, yeah. things like that. But this yeah. is the this is the next rung in your in your ladder, right? So right, and that you know it's interesting you say that because aside from really thinking of my boys and what I wanted them to be able to witness, it was it wasn't an internal knowing that I had that I was not maximizing what I felt like I was here to do, and you know I sort of kept having this question repeat. And I talk about this in the book of. You know, if, if something was to happen to me or I was to get really sick and God was asking me, you know, Dana, did you do everything with the gifts that I gave you? And at that time, my answer would have been no. Mm -hmm. And it's like you say, I felt really sad about that. And I felt really actually out of integrity with myself um, because it did feel like, wow, what a, what a potential waste. Yeah. That, that I was too afraid um, that I didn't try at least to go after those things, you know, right. just to see like what, what was possible. Yeah. And so in stepping into that work and making that decision um, in, you know, all of the research and, and then the sort of the new format for the process, how it really can set someone up to try some things that they had never tried before. And like right now, you know, when you, you look at all the numbers and you see it in the news and the headlines of just how dissatisfied people are, how lonely they are, how unfulfilled they are, that I think when you talk about taking the time to really figure out, you know, who am I and what do, what do I want in my life? Because we, we have the ability to be conscious about that and make a change. Yeah. And, um, you know, if people are really stuck in some bad habits or in, you know, uh, relationships that make them miserable, I really think that this is a way for people to get some clarity about, you know, gosh, where am I at right now? And where would I really like to go? It's almost like, you know, when you reboot your computer, you hit control, alt, reset. It's like yeah. doing that for your life, right? Like, yeah. 
let me just take a deep breath and 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 really kind of quote unquote like start over almost right and yeah. get like a fresh start. Um, one of the uh, books that I read this year uh, was The Power of Belief by uh, Bruce Lipton. You know Bruce Lipton? Mm, I don't. Uh, no. Bruce Lipton is a PhD cellular biologist, right? Okay. And he was working at Stanford, took a sabbatical. He's a scientist. He wasn't, you know, like you or me going to all these like, you know, motivational, life-changing, inspirational business seminars, et cetera. He was a PhD cellular biologist. He took a sabbatical and, and uh, he went, he went to um, one of the islands in the, in the Caribbean and studied at a hospital there and started discovering uh, just by, he says, kind of like by accident while studying cells and, and um, genes, mm -hmm. genetics that, um, uh, you know, most people think a lot of sicknesses are genetic, right? Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, he found out in his science-based research that it's, it's about 5% of actual like diseases are genetic, right? And then, uh, and then there's like another 10% that are environmental factors, could be mm -hmm. toxins, it could mm -hmm. be uh, emotional trauma, right, mm -hmm. growing up, um, uh, that, that could affect your health as well, right? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so that leaves about 85% that is what? It is what you put in your head. Like what yeah. you decide to put in your head about believing yeah. who you are, uh, you know, how you react to situations, mm -hmm. right? You know, where you can be in your life. And, and then, uh, you know, as far as deciding whether you're going to be happy or not, and it doesn't happen overnight, not like a life yeah. switch. You both, you and I both know it takes time, mm -hmm. but the power of beliefs long-term is according to him. And, and this guy, like I said, he's not Tony Robbins. He's a cellular PhD biologist. Uh, according to him, he's like, it is, it is about 85% up to us. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as uh, how, how our lives turn out from a health perspective. That blew me away. I mean, I kind of knew it. I wanted to believe it in my heart all the time. But when this guy said it, I'm like, wow. So yeah, yeah Bruce Lipton, if you Google him and check some videos, it'll reaffirm from a science-based perspective everything that you and I believe to be true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll do that for sure. Yeah, and, yeah. and uh, Dr. Sereni Pillay, who was... Uh, doctor who endorsed the book. He's a Harvard psychiatrist and he's the owner of a couple of businesses. Um, he has a business called Neuro Business Group. And he is, what I love about him, I call him, he's like the male version of Brene Brown, yeah. where he is great at explaining the neuroscience behind the ability to change our thought patterns and our thought processes in how we want to create this future. And so much of that turning point for me was in listening to people like him and, and then also realizing it's like you said, you know, it's not, it's not enough to just put the thought in your mind, like that's the start. But then if we take the steps, if we just start taking the first step, it is amazing how we can start to transform that. And, you know, it really is. I think that's one of the bigger things too, is that, I've, I've probably looked for plenty of quick fixes in my life, you know, to how do you subdue the pain? How do you get out of the bad relationship that's not working? You know, there's unhealthy habits that sometimes repeat themselves in life. And there really isn't the quick fix. But <coughs> what, what I like about how life mapping is set up is that um, if you learn the process and it's something that you implement into your life, it is like that daily reminder because if you know no matter where we're at in our life none of us comes with already having these sorts of tools generally already just embedded in you know what we do and how we conduct our daily lives yeah so it's i like it it's yeah. i like well it's it's easier to be negative right it's easier to just you know, I think it's not going to work out and, you know, hang out on the couch. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very easy, right? It's, it, it's, and I think our bodies are almost programmed to do it because it's easier, right? But it yeah. takes a, a more instigative effort to, um, you know, go against the current uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and really, you know, create um, these successes in all these different categories of our, of our lives. And then uh, I would imagine, you know, it happened to you too, that, you know, as you start to experience success in these areas, you're, you're going to, uh, you're going to uh, move on from some of your friendships and relationships, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to have to shed, shed some of your old relationships because they're, they're not going to be happy for you because you're kind of 
you're leaving them a little bit, right? And that, that's part of the journey too, is being to be like, you know, uh, like it or not, I'm gonna have to prune my rose bush a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so true. Uh, and you know how Darren Hardy talks about that too. You know, yeah. just like even physiologically, we're just designed to sort of conserve energy yeah. and sort of take the path of least resistance. Yeah. It's just, there's a different kind of fulfillment that can come out of life if we pursue the things that are really meaningful or bring us joy. And so, you know, I, I am, I like the reminder of that. And then as far as, you know, the people that we surround ourselves with, absolutely. It's like yeah. this um, constant sort of evolution on the journey of who you are. And, you know, I, I've been conscious about that in some areas. And then I also feel like it's been great. The, the people or the new communities that I've been introduced to just as a result of trying some new things that I yeah. didn't even know were out there. So yeah. that's been yeah. really re rewarding. Yeah. Well, it is, it's, 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 it's the, the people that you end up meeting when you're on this journey, right? Cause you, you, right. you, you find other like-minded thinkers, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like, Hey, I want to connect with that person. Right. So, yeah. you know, when you sent me your book, I said, you know, I got to give Dana a call. I like this. And, you. Uh, you know, we both have that common bond of going through the Darren Hardy high performance mm -hmm. forum program. Um, so that's a good connection as well. Yeah. So Dana, you know, I usually go for about a half an hour. I mean, I could talk to you for a long, long time because I'm, I'm loving what you're doing. I'm so excited about it. Uh, but, you know, before we go, uh, let's say somebody is interested, right? Somebody's mm -hmm. like, all right, I am ready once and for all to get my life together. What are some of the first steps that you would recommend that they do to, you know, quote unquote, stop the insanity and, and start moving forward? So I would recommend uh, one of the easiest places to start is if, if they wanted to, to take a look at the book or the companion guide, those are available. They're available through the, um, the Life Mapping Institute website and also through Amazon. But I think it's really it's pausing that the first part of the process is really about understanding, you know, what are your beliefs and how do you want to show up in the world and what are the things you value? And I think when people take the time to do that, they get a much clearer picture of really who they are and then who they want to be. It makes it easier to start evaluating what does that look like in comparison to how I'm living life right now. And that's a great place to, to start to make some decisions about, you know, are there things I need to shed or replace um, habits that I have that are not healthy for me. And just choosing you know, to start just one thing, you know, one thing that you re really know is detrimental to your well-being or your health and just starting to replace it with something else. Yeah. Absolutely. Not depriving, not depriving yourself, but mm -hmm. finding something that you can replace that will make you feel even better. Sure. Still have the cheeseburger every now and then, but yeah. not every day, right? That's right. <laughs> uh, That's right. And well, and what I love about your program is you're, you know, you're just not a successful person who decided to take life to the next level and share it with people. I mean, you, you, you transformed yourself, right, from where you were when you were a teenager to now. So it's, you know, it's just even harder to do. So I just a lot of, a lot of love and respect for you and what you're doing. And I'm honored to know you and that you're on my show. And I feel like I know you're taking some courses on uh, professional speaking and, and doing more and more of that. Um, so I feel like I uh, just was able to buy a, a stock on the way up, you know, because maybe in a couple of years you won't have time for me. So I'm very glad I met you now because <laughs> I feel like you're, you're uh, going to be real big time with what you're doing. So congratulations. Thank and thank you. Uh, you know, wishing you massive success. Uh, everybody, if you want to go to Dana's uh, website, it's uh, it's life mapping Institute.com. Mm -hmm. All the programs are there to, to help you hit the ground running. She also has a Facebook page. Just go on Facebook and look for Life Mapping Institute. Her book, Live uh, Live Your Gift. And if you're watching this, I'm holding it up. It's a you know beautiful cover, uh, coming along with the companion guide as well. Um, and this this uh, you can buy at the website as well, as you said, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, Dana, what else? If people want to reach out and get in touch with you, uh, what how can how can they do that? So email for sure. My email's on the website, but it is my name, uh, like is on the book, Dana V. Uh, Adams. So it's V like Victor Adams. 
at lifemappinginstitute.com. So always open to a conversation and I am definitely hoping to take this to more of the larger audiences too, um, businesses that care about their employees because it really has this holistic, you know, the wellness aspect and piece of trying to bring up those things where we really shine if yeah. we're living more in alignment with who we truly are. And I think that that's something that employers can also help give to their employees if they don't know how to get there themselves. So yeah, yeah absolutely. excited for that. Well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the program here and I might be calling you for some help. Do you mind? Absolutely. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Yeah. Excellent. We got to get you speaking at one of my conferences in the near future too. I love that. So yeah, absolutely. I would love that. Thank you Excellent. for all you do too. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, uh, I know you come out to, you're in the Northwest, but I know you come out to the, the Northeast every now and then for some of the, mm -hmm. the training that you do. So we're going to have to get together. Yes, for sure. I love that. Good. Well, Dana Adams from the Light Mapping Institute. Thank you so much. Once again, appreciate your time. Appreciate you being on the show and really congratulations for all that you're doing. Very, very glad that you were born. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> yep. And I want to thank you all too, the Avanti family for listening and are watching. Love uh, having you with us too and appreciate your time. You can always go to AvantiEntrepreneur.com to learn more about what we do. Uh, really see and listen to a lot of our other podcasts, learn about our programs, our events, et cetera, AvantiEntrepreneur.com. Uh, everybody have a great rest of the day and make sure to stay awesome. Thank you.